Welcome back everyone to Lida. Lida. We did this video last week and you may be thinking that we have, uh, we've already talked about Lida, and, but that one was done by ChatGPT. We asked it to give us some information about where to go in the city and what to do. And we thought we could do better as humans who actually live here and have had real experiences here. So before you go ahead and watch this video, make sure you watch part one, which we will have linked up uh, right, here. right up there in, in the description. But Tracy, I think we should make it a little bit more challenging for ourselves. Yeah. So as a reminder, last week we asked ChatGPT what five things we should do in Leiden on a Saturday. This week we should do five more things. To make it fair. Although well, we, we could probably come up with a hundred. Yeah. It was really hard to narrow it down for this, but I think we should not do any of the things that ChatGPT recommended because okay. we did them last week. All right. I think that's pretty fair. So where are we headed first? Whenever I come to a new city, one of the first things I love to do is to get a good view of the city and see what's going on around it and kind of get my bearings on things. Mm -hmm. So I thought for one of the first things you should do when you come to Leiden is to go get a great view of the city. At is De Berg? De Berg. Uh, so let's go over there and check that out. One of the reasons we love De Berge is it's got just such a beautiful view of the city. And it's really one of those places where you can see some of the beautiful churches and some of the old buildings. Before. Like the Peter's character we visited last week. Yeah, you can see it from up here. Actually, the church that's right over here next to it was my lock screen on my phone for a while because it was just so beautiful. And once we actually got here, we had to see what it was and where it is and everything. It just made me fall even more in love. Yeah, you truly get a panoramic view of the city if you get here early enough, like we are. I think it's about a little after 9 a.m. There's only two other people up here. Um, so De Berg has roots from 1060 um, as being part of the history of Lida. And it's actually built up on top of a hill, which dates back to like the ninth century, which is really crazy. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be a tower as part of this, um, the over time and it being used as a fortress to pre prevent sieges from happening um, is no longer here. Instead, there's a public park in the middle now. Um, it also, I was reading, has some roots as being um, in the 1600s as being like the big source of where you could get water in Lida. And there's a giant like well in mm -hmm. here so that makes total sense and i didn't know that before um but overall it's just a very peaceful beautiful um place to come it's kind of a sanctuary like in the middle of the city mm -hmm. really really pretty this museum we've actually not really heard much about the museum de lakenhall 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 i mm -hmm. think but it's supposed to be the museum of light yeah um both modern and contemporary mixed with antiquated art. Um, there's also a textile connection that is kind of cool. As we walked up, we saw a sign that said that this was the textile like trading center for the area. In first impressions, it's like when the gate is closed, it's very like unassuming looking, but once the gate is open, you it looks through. like a little palace. It's beautiful. Yeah, it, it's really cool looking. I'm excited to check this out. I hear they have a Rembrandt here. Ooh.
I am just blown away by that museum. It might be my new favorite. Yeah. It, this one definitely felt Leiden. Like the Rijks Museum that we saw last week was a lot of e Egyptian, a lot of that, like just generally Dutch things. This one was pretty much all Leiden. And I feel like if you're coming to a town and you want to get to experience it, you want to hear about the town that you're coming to experience. I just, wow. Yeah. I mean, seeing not one, but two Rembrandts. And a third one that wasn't by Rembrandt, but was made in his studio. It's very humbling to be in the presence of great art like that. It's like almost a little emotional for me. Um, the third floor is almost practically all dedicated to Drew October. Light and onset, yeah. Light and onset. Um, seeing the stamp pot. The that, actual pot. Like, well, it's a pot from 1574, I think. Kind of crazy. And seeing the art. If you watched our Drew October video, you know we've talked a little bit about the story of Vanderwerf offering his body to the starving people of Leiden. And there are so many works of art depicting it. Some that are just like floor to ceiling. Massive. Like these people were bigger than I was. It was more than life size. I mean, I just, wow. And not only is there so much to see, it is just a beautiful building. Oh yeah. yeah. The Leiden keys are everywhere. So if you're into seeing those, that's really Fun cool. Fun little game. Yeah. I don't know about you, Tracy, but I'm getting a little snacky. Yeah. Yeah. Before we go though, what was your favorite part? I, I, I've been doing all the talking. <laughs> My favorite part was seeing the connection to the textiles and where it was. There were some rooms there that looked as if they had not been touched since they were used for textiles. And yeah, it was really cool. I think we'll need to bring your mom here the next time she's oh, visiting. Yeah. My mom's a big quilter, so textiles are a thing. There is a gift shop that does sell some fabric, but extremely expensive roses. It is insanely expensive. It is absolutely beautiful. Like 175 euros per meter. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we'll be going home with that today. No. Nope. Um, but it was really nice to experience that. But yes, I am getting a little hungry. There was a cute looking cafe in there that uh, could be cool, but we've got a special place picked out that is uh, only here in Leiden. And I think we should go over there next. One of our favorites. So come on with us. Let's go uh, have a little lunch. Yeah. Where we decided to get lunch today is... The Stahl Holzwein? Holzwein. We always call it Goswein. But <laughs> it's right off the main square, or the main uh, canal and river through Leiden. And they do a lot of natural wines and a lot of really good food. I really like it because they ferment there. Oh my gosh, they make their own kimchi. They have like a whole bunch of fermentation. Yeah, going. it's pretty cool. We just had an amazing conversation with the owner like all about food and what we love and... Mm -hmm. um, they have more than just natural wines, though. They have some beer. They have um, a couple cocktails on the menu. And their dishes are just superb. What did you have to eat? I got the kimchi toasty. Uh, well, we started with the oof mayonnaise, oof mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. which is kind of like a deviled egg. It has truffle caviar on top. Yeah. It's really Lecker. good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had a kimchi toasty that was really, really good. And then I had... Um, a baguette with a little bit of ham, comte de cheese, and then uh, I believe a homemade grape compote, which was just fantastic. And then we finished all that off with a nice dessert, which was really weird, but this really good. Poached rhubarb, a little bit of Szechuan pepper dust on top, meringue. It was just fantastic. This is a good place. They open at 11? 11 or 12, and they're open till late. Um, their menu does change a little bit for dinner. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's a very calm, chill restaurant. During the summer, the terrace is incredible to sit out. Uh, it's great people watching. Tabasco really likes it too. Yeah, it's a great place to bring the pub. I think we should go and explore a little bit more of Leiden's history, kind of in the Rembrandt way. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Our fourth destination on our Saturday in Leiden is uh, taking like a do-it-yourself tour of uh, Rembrandt's life, one of the Dutch masters. Um, he was actually born in Leiden in 1606, and there's a plaque right over here that shows um, where he was born. Obviously, it's not the same building. There's a few statues that talk about his life. Um, just an overall really nice place to come and kind of contemplate one of the greatest Dutch masters of all time. 
Um, Rembrandt continued to have so many connections to Leiden. Um, his Latin school is here in Leiden, which you can go and visit. Um, the church that his family went to is actually the Peterskirk, which was featured in last week's video. And he attended Leiden University, although there's not really any documentation of the classes he took there. He did enroll when he was 14. Generally, the age was 18, but there were benefits to enrolling in university that early, such as tax-free beer and not having to join the armed forces. Unlike many of the other um, great painters of the time, uh, Rembrandt never left the Netherlands. A lot of his counterparts and contemporaries traveled off to Italy to learn from the greats. Um, he never did. Um, and his life was not without controversy. Apparently when he died, he was in significant amounts of debt um, due to purchasing lots of stuffed animals, Roman artifacts, things like that. Um, and one of the pieces of art that we saw in the museum, the Lachen Hall had his name on it, but was actually painted by one of his students. And there were a few instances that he would put his name on works that maybe his students and, uh, fellow artisans working for him um, painted. Not too far away from the Rembrandt plane is the Molin de Put, uh, which is a replica of a 1619 windmill. Um, and it's actually working on Saturdays. Um, you can go and see them actually go and mill the grain. And then there's a cute little park over there with a pirate ship for kids to play on. Or if the weather is inclement like today, um, you maybe want to just saunter down to the Museum Volconde uh, and get inside and I would not recommend this for this type of weather. <laughs>
Yeah, tell us what you thought. Did you enjoy the AI video that we put out last week more, or did you enjoy this one, which is a little bit more curated? Or are you going to stick in the middle and say a combination of both? Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> With that, though, I have to say there were some challenges shooting our own video, mainly because we love the city so much. There's so many things to do. It is overwhelming how many things there are to do in Lida. Um, there are 14 museums in the city, which <laughs> is just wild. So narrowing it down, uh, the Japan Seabolt House, Wakonde, uh, the Molin de Volk. I mean, it was impossible to narrow down. Yeah, yeah, what, the um, the restaurants we love here, the bars we love here, it, it's hard picking favorites. So that is a pro for ChatGPT, is that it does curate a list for you pretty easily and tells you exactly where to go. And if you're indecisive, it, like me, um, <laughs> you know, it's nice to have it already figured out for you. Tracy, though, even though we have to figure out the list ourselves, there are some pros doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a couple of pros? Well, like we talked about last week, you can plan um, meals. And adequate bathroom breaks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also nice to be able to feel like you have a little bit more control on what's going on and you're not just going on some pre-scripted plan. Yeah, absolutely. You can kind of curate it to what you like best mm -hmm. and it's do it in sharing. the order that you like best. Yeah. And I feel that you really get to customize it for who you are. And one final pro is, I mean, we love, like it just makes me fall in love with the city that we live in. And we're so lucky to get to live here all over again. So mm -hmm. with that, we're going to thank you all for watching. Thank you for joining us. And next week should be a fun video as well. We'll see you next week. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.